morning, everyone. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we join together on this Wednesday and celebrate this day of votive mass to St. Joseph. Let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who in your inexpressible providence were pleased to choose St. Joseph, as spouse of the most holy mother of your son, grant, we pray, that we who revere him as our protector on earth may be worthy of his heavenly intercession. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, he and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here. The Lord has sent me on to the Jordan. As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you, Elisha replied. And so the two went on together. Fifty of the guild prophets followed, and when the two stopped at the Jordan, they stood facing them at a distance. Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water, which divided, and both crossed over on dry land. When they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask for whatever I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha answered, May I receive a double portion of your spirit? You have asked something that is not easy, Elijah replied. Still, if you see me taken up from you, your wish will be granted, otherwise not. As they walked on conversing, a flaming chariot and flaming horses came between them and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. When Elisha saw it happen, he cried out, My father, my father, Israel's chariots and drivers. But when he could no longer see him, Elisha gripped his own garment and tore it in two. Then he picked up Elijah's mantle that had fallen from him and went back and stood at the bank of the Jordan. Wielding the mantle that had fallen from Elijah, Elisha struck the water in his turn and said, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When Elisha struck the water, it divided, and he crossed over. The word of the Lord. You. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. <clears throat> How great is the goodness of God, which you have in store for those who fear you, in which, toward those who take refuge in you, you show in the sight of the children of men. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plottings of men. You screen them within your abode from the strife of tongues. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Love the Lord, all you his faithful ones. The Lord keeps those who are constant, but more than requites those who act proudly. The Lord...
loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your heavenly Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may be appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to others to be fasting. Except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. In celebrating this votive Mass for St. Joseph, we can almost lean into some of these things we've heard in the scriptures today in a particular way. When you talk about Elisha the prophet, who's different than Elijah the prophet, obviously, you see this kind of handing off, if you will, this mantle of uh, being the prophet, so to speak, that goes from Elijah to his protege. And it's a very interesting kind of handoff here because, you know, Elijah's trying to just say, all right, like, let me go and finish my mission here. And Elisha's like, well, I'm not leaving you. And then when he asks for something, He asks for a double portion of his spirit. And you almost kind of get the sense, like, you know, of those words that our Lord says to James and John in the scriptures, kind of like, you don't know quite what you're asking here, bud. But, you know, if if you see me taken up to heaven, like, you know, in a whirlwind here, you're going to get your wish. And so it happens. That's almost where we get this phrase, quote, unquote, taking up the mantle. Huh? Oh, there we go. Everybody just, uh, the light turned on for everybody, right? So this is kind of where we understand this kind of, you know, gifting, if you will. That the Lord is going to kind of lead us on here, but it's a matter of are we going to follow where we are meant to be. But beyond that, it also goes to this inner life that is needed for any of us to follow out the mission that God has made for us. And here is where St. Joseph, I think, plays prominently in today's proceedings. Because if you listen to the scripture, which is usually an Ash Wednesday reading, about prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, right? You hear it every Ash Wednesday, and you're all just like, oh, I've heard it before. It's like every time, yes, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, yes, don't let anybody see what you're doing. You understand, though, dear friends, that when it comes to these things, right, is it about us, or is it about serving our Lord who is going to bless us abundantly in that quiet. For the totality of his life, St. Joseph wasn't exactly showing all of these things to the world. In scripture, he has no words. He doesn't say anything. It's all about him receiving from God what he is meant to do and acting upon it. He does it most prominently when the angel appears to him twice wants to take Mary into his home and to recognize that, yes, indeed, you are about to be the earthly father of our Lord and Savior, 
and you will receive the graces you need for this job. And then also, secondly, a warning to get both Our Lady and Jesus proverbially out of Dodge, so to speak, because Herod is searching for the child and he is going to take action to try to preserve his place of power. Action that, again, is as horrific as you think it'll be. That in mind, though, that doesn't happen if St. Joseph doesn't have that requisite humility to enter into this gift. Humility, my dear friends, always recognizes that I am not God. There is a God, I am not Him. But it also recognizes the need for God to speak into my heart and so I can take the steps that He's asking me to. In other words, humility is a posture of receptivity and responsiveness versus a posture of action. The Catechism of the Catholic Church kind of puts it this way in light of the Church itself, saying that the Marian dimension of the Church must precede the Petrine dimension. What does that mean? Because you're just like, Father, you threw a lot of words at me right now. What it means is, like Our Lady, we have to be in a posture of receptivity first, before we are in a posture of St. Peter. What's the posture of St. Peter? Action. Right? And notice how that gets him in trouble every now and then? When he kind of acts before he thinks? St. Joseph is almost that model, dear friends. He receives the gifts from our Lord and then acts. He receives do you and I slow down enough in our daily lives to receive from the Lord and then act upon what he's asking us to do? Even when it's something we'd rather not do. You ever been asked by the Lord and had that knocking on the door of your heart and he's asking you to do something you'd rather not do? Kind of that whole little piece of going, oh no, Lord, not that piece. Or, oh Lord, not that conversation. Or, oh Lord, not this particular way of doing it. Do we have the humility to say, Lord, I'd rather not do it this way, but your will be done? Or even more, do we lean into this idea to truly trust our Lord when we ourselves don't have maybe the full scope of all of the pieces of it, but we know we're being prompted in that direction? Because to say we trust in Jesus is very nice, very pious, and a very nice platitude. But my question, dear friends, is that when the rubber meets the road, do we really trust, or do we just give it lip service? The idea, my dear friends, is that we don't fall into the same trappings over and over and over again by not waiting upon him to kind of move our hearts to take a step. But that when he gives us this prompting, that we act in joy and we allow ourselves to be led. That only happens if we continually learn to tune into his voice, to understand his voice. And that continues to evolve as we grow in that understanding of that gifting through our prayer, development of our prayer lives. I cannot tell you, dear friends, how critical it is to start to learn that gifting of our Lord's interior work within. That not every thought is our own, but that there are many things the Lord is trying to say to us. And there are quite a few things that old screw tape down below is trying to say to us, too. The question is, my dear friends, is are we beginning to learn about discernment and whose voice we're hearing? So that when the moment comes, we know who's speaking to us, and we act upon it in either a way of action or a way of rejection of what is, the, what is there, because it's not God. If we don't do that, we don't learn that particular gifting, which is accessible to all of us because it is part of the normative way of Christian life and prayer, then we're going to get stuck constantly be spinning our wheels. But know this, and this is where I am this morning. 
The year 2000, St. John Paul II talked about the importance of prayer and that for the church of the third millennium, parishes were going to have to become, quote, schools of prayer to address the entirety of what was coming at them in the world. Well, 24 years on, my dear friends, we're making some headway in that, but not a ton. My question to you is that, are you taking that, those opportunities to grow in that life of the prayer when it's presented to you? Because he is making us in this way of entering into this beautiful communion with him. He's making avenues for us to enter into this communion. But so often, we let these lesser things of the world control everything around us. We don't take the opportunity for the, doors, the Lord's knocking at the door of our heart. I encourage you to take those opportunities, my dear friends, as they present themselves. Because if one person learns how to pray and draw close to God, they'll teach others where to find water in the midst of this current desert we're living in of the world. With that in mind, we ask our patron for a little bit of help today to enter into the depth of that communion with God through prayer. As we say together, St. Joseph, pray for us. Trusting in our Lord and Savior, let us lift our prayers before him this day. For children who have lost their parents, for their sadness being tempered by, by the comfort of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord Those who do not have access to healthy or fresh food, may their community seek solutions to erase trouble in this area, we pray to the Lord. Those in need of hope in their lives, may they find comfort in the living God. We pray to the Lord. Lord our For a continued giving of ourselves, that we may serve one another in the ways that our Lord is prompting to in our own hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord For those who are sick and suffering, silently here in our community, may our prayers bring comfort as God brings healing. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, in a particular way, for Bishop Daniel Riley, the Bishop Emeritus of this diocese, who passed away yesterday evening, may he and all those who have passed from this life rejoice in our Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord and as we lift up Bernice Kamitis in the prayer of this liturgy, let us also offer up our own prayers to the Lord in the silence of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord Good and gracious God, strengthen us with the gift of your grace and mercy at work within. And through the intercession of St. Joseph, may our hearts be attuned to the will of God in our prayer lives, that we may respond generously to the promptings of the Spirit, leading us onward to serve not only our Lord, but one another. And we ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands and become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we prepare to offer the sacrifice of praise, O Holy Father, we humbly ask to be sustained in our service by the prayers of Saint Joseph, whom you call to watch like a father on earth over your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and in honoring Saint Joseph, give you fitting praise to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten son who is conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, Save from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. On you stay, we toll this peccata mundi. Stay here, Queen. 
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come, share your master's joy. Now for the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, Unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Restored by these life-giving sacraments, Lord, we may, may we live with for you always in justice and holiness, helped by the example and intercession of St. Joseph, who in carrying out your great mysteries served you as a man just and obedient. Through Christ our Lord. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Fourth, the Mass is ended. Amen. Have a great day, everyone.